Welcome back. In this video, you will learn how to create an EC2 instance and install a web server. You will also learn how to SSH to an EC2 instance. But before launching the instance, let's go to the EC2 webpage to get a high-level idea about EC2. I'm on the EC2 homepage. The first important point to notice is that EC2 is an abbreviated term for Elastic Compute Cloud. Now let's see what it does. The web service provides a secure, resizable compute capacity in the cloud. In this line, let's look into some keywords or phrases to get a good idea about EC2. The first is web service. What it means is that you can access an EC2 instance using an HTTP endpoint. The other important word in this line is secure. What it means is that you can control inbound and outbound traffic to an EC2 instance. Okay. The other important phrase is resizable compute capacity. It means that an EC2 instance has an auto-scaling feature, and using the auto-scaling feature, you can scale up or down based on various metrics such as CPU utilization or I.O. throughput. On this EC2 webpage, I want to bring your attention to these four points. As of this recording, you can launch over 400 different types of EC2 instances. It is the only cloud provider that supports Mac OS. You can launch EC2 instances in 25 regions and 81 availability zones worldwide, and choose Intel, AMD, and ARM-based processors. You can read the rest of it, but I think this basic knowledge about EC2 is sufficient for this lecture. Let's head to the AWS Management Console to launch an EC2 instance. I'm on the AWS homepage. Let's log in to the AWS Management Console. I'm logged in. Go to the EC2 service by typing EC2 in the search bar or selecting EC2 from the recently visited services if it is shown. I will type EC2 in the search bar and I will select this EC2. Now I'm on the EC2 dashboard. At the top right, you can notice in my account that it shows one instance is running. Next, you see the account name. Next is the default region of my account. In my case, it is Northern Virginia, which has the region code US East 1. In your case, your default region could be different depending on your account's geographical location, okay? Since I'm launching an instance, I will click on Launch Instance. Next is to select AMI, which is Amazon Machine Image. All AMIs are listed. You can search for Linux, Windows, or Mac AMIs here. Now, let's search for Windows to check all the Windows AMIs, okay? As you can see, these are all the Windows AMIs currently available. You can also launch Mac types of EC2 instances as well. That being said, let's search for Mac. Okay, as you can see, there are three Mac AMIs available. Okay, now since I will launch a web server on a Linux machine, let's search for Linux. As you can see, there are so many options here. The question is which one I should choose, right? The first deciding factor is that I'm looking for a free tier instance, as I am not looking for any high-end configuration. Just minimal RAM and hard disk are okay, so this one is the likely choice. Furthermore, my next deciding factor is that I would look for Amazon Linux AMIs since I'm launching a Linux virtual machine on AWS. Why Amazon Linux AMI? Usually, using Amazon Linux AMI is a good idea because you get additional AWS-related features already installed on the Amazon Linux AMI. For instance, if you need to run CLI commands on the launched EC2 instance, you don't need to install it separately. Okay. I will select an Amazon Linux 2 AMI, which is free tier eligible, so it will have AWS CLI and other related configurations already set up. Okay. And 64-bit x86 is okay. So let me select this AMI. Okay. Now I will select a T2 micro instance as it is eligible for free tier. The T2 micro is an instance type. Okay, so what is instance type? An EC2 instance type is an EC2 instance categorization based on CPU, memory, storage, and networking capacity combinations. T2 micro is one of the instance types, right? There are other instance types as well. You could see T2 medium, T2 large, and T2 extra large, right? All these instance types have varying CPU, memory, and storage capacity. Okay, so click on the next configure instance details here. The default is okay. I will only add a few Linux commands to the user data to install the web server. Right? There is one thing I wanted to mention here. 
For this AWS region, there are six availability zones, right? Since I'll be launching one instance right now, it doesn't matter which availability zone I choose. So let me choose this one, the US East one. Now, let's go to the user data section. What is user data? Let me copy and paste shell commands first here. What is user data? You can specify user data to configure an instance or run a configuration script during a launch. The one advantage of user data is that you can launch multiple instances simultaneously. That way, the same user data is available for all instances in that reservation. Okay? For example, shell commands such as installing any patch or installing any software after the instance is launched before making it available. Right now, I'm launching only one instance. But suppose I were to launch three instances. I will need to have this user data script only in one place, and all three instances will get this from the user data section. Okay, let me change this to one, because I will launch only one instance in this demo, okay? Let's go through each line to understand what it is. So the first line says I will be using Bash Shell, and the second line is about updating OS. It's always good practice to update the OS in case a new security patch is released. However, if the update is not available in the AMI you are using, it could lead to potential security risks. So it's good practice always to do sudo yum update when you start your Linux machine, okay? The third line is about installing the HTTP web server. And the last is about starting the web server. The last line will take care of the HTTP daemon. What it means is that it will start the HTTP server whenever this EC2 instance stops and starts again. This means the web server will be started automatically at the server startup, okay? Next, click on Add Storage, and the 8 gigs is OK here. OK. Next, click on Add Tags. I'll just skip it because this is an optional section. Next is to configure the security group. So, what is a security group? A security group is a mechanism to control inbound and outbound connections to the launched EC2 instance. For example, what type of traffic and sources are allowed to connect to a launched EC2 instance? Is an inbound FTP connection allowed? If allowed, is it allowed from all IP addresses or selected IPs? I think you got the idea, right? Regarding default settings, no inbound connection is allowed to a launched instance. All outbound connections are allowed from a launched EC2 instance. Okay? That being the case, I must set up inbound connections for this instance. Okay because default, no inbound connection is allowed. That way, as you can notice, I cannot SSH to this launched EC2 instance. So I'll create a new security group and let me name this security group. Let me add a description. Also, it's a good idea to put a description as someone going through will know what the security group is all about. Okay, now I'll change the source IP so that an SSH connection can only be made from my machine. So I will change the source to my IP, right? So that way, an SSH connection can be made only from my machine. Secondly, I need to open the HTTP connection port for the web server. So I will click on the Add rule and select HTTP. And for the source, I'd like my web server to be accessed from anywhere. So I will change the source to anywhere. OK, now I'll click on Review and Launch. Let me click the Launch button which asks about the key pair. You need a key pair to SSH to the launched instance. So I will create a new key pair. Let me give the name of this key pair. Then click on Download Key Pair. You need to download the key pair. Otherwise, you will not be able to make the connection. So download the key pair and click on the Launch Instance. Now you can notice the message. It is saying that your instances are now launching. Okay, I can click here to view instances. It does not show any name. Let me give the Apache web server test. Okay. That way, I will know that this is the instance we are launching. Okay. Next, let's test whether the web server has been installed correctly by user data that we applied on the AMI. Remember, we are installing the web server by applying user data on the Amazon Linux AMI instance, right? How to test it? I can click here. Default. Chrome adds HTTPS, 
but since I have not opened HTTPS, it won't work. So let me remove S from here. Now it should be fine. As you can notice, we got the Apache Web Server test page. So now, let's see how to make an SSH connection to the EC2 instance from the local machine. Okay, so let me open a new window. I will go to the temp directory. I'll do all the operations, SSH, etc., from this directory. So let me copy the EC2 key pair that I downloaded into this directory. Okay. So, as you can see, I got this key pair in this temp directory. Now, we need to change the permission of this key file to ensure that the key is not publicly viewable. You can notice that the owner has read and write permissions, and there are read options for the group and others. Right. So, we need to change the permission on this key file so it is not publicly viewable. How do you do that? chmod400 and the file name. Okay? Now, if you do ls, you can see that the read option has gone for other users. So now, this key is not publicly viewable, okay? Now connect to the launched EC2 instance. You will say ssh-i and the key pair name, okay? Next, you will give the EC2 user, which is the default name for the Amazon Linux AMI, and then the public IP address of the EC2 instance, and hit the return key. Enter yes. As you can see, I am on the launch the EC2 instance. Okay, I can do ls here. Now, let's go to the directory where the web server is installed. Okay, and right now there is no file. Let me add a test.html file. Let's just put it here. Sorry, I have to do sudo. Okay, save it. Now let's go and check whether this HTML page is available or not. This is the main URL for the web server we launched. Let me add this test.html to see whether we are getting that HTML file here or not. So as you can see, we got the result of this, which is my test homepage, right? So this is how you will connect to your EC2 instance and make changes. Now the other thing, suppose that you are not on your local machine, right? Mac machine or whichever machine you have configured to have an SSH connection to the launched EC2 instance, right? Then how will you connect to the launched EC2 instance? Well, you can also make an SSH connection directly from this browser. So if you click here on the connect button, the public IP is fine and the username is EC2 user. Let's click on connect, right? Um, right now, it is failing because I have set up an inbound SSH connection from my local machine only, which means from my Mac only, right? So that's the reason it is failing. Let me make a change to the inbound connection in the security group attached to the launched EC2 instance. This is the security group. Let me click on the inbound. Let me change here to SSH. Click Edit Inbound Rule. And here, let me change it to Anywhere. I will not recommend changing it to Anywhere. However, sometimes, in one-off cases, you may need it for testing out something urgent if you are unavailable on your local machine and want to make changes remotely. Right? So in that condition, you need this. In that case, this option is helpful. Okay. So make a change. You say Save Rules and now go to Instance, select Instances, and say Connect. All these options are okay. Let's click Connect. And you see, I got connected here, right? This is how you will make an SSH connection from the AWS Management Console. Okay. Now, you can stop an EC2 instance, you can reboot an EC2 instance, and you can e terminate an instance. I usually terminate an instance if I don't need it. Let me terminate this instance. Let me refresh here, just to show you. Now, this instance is shutting down, and ultimately, it will terminate. Okay, in this video, you saw how to launch an EC2 instance and set up a web server. Then, you saw how to make an SSH connection to the launched EC2 instance from the local machine and from the AWS Management Console. 
Then finally, you saw how to terminate the EC2 launched instance.